And hi, everybody. Um, for those of you that don't know me, hi, Petra. Uh, I am Amory Benetti. I am. Um, I wear a couple of different hats within the sector. Um, my full-time position is at Community Living Toronto as the manager of community engagement and advocacy. I've uh, been with the organization uh, for several decades. Let's just put it that way. And if I've had every position within the organization. Um, I also work to support the provincial network on developmental services. So I actually work with a number of the executive directors across the uh, province. So um, Diane, I work with Brian quite a bit and, and some of the other folks again across the province um, because I was actually on secondment for four years working on um, projects within the, the um, uh, within the developmental services sector on the with the provincial network, specifically around the human resource strategy. So I don't know if you folks have heard of it, but things like the core developmental services, core competencies, some educational pieces um, came out of that strategy. Um, so again, I continue to support that. And then I also teach part-time for Fanshawe College for the DSW apprenticeship program. So a couple of different hats. Um, with that being said, um, part of why I'm here presenting connectability, because it's actually not on my portfolio at, at Community Living Toronto, but I was invited to join a group that the Ministry of uh, Children, Community and Social Services have brought together around supporting individuals, families, caregivers um, during the pandemic. Um, and really what this group was around was was focused on is really around knowledge translation, knowledge mobilization. So we know that there's un, so many resources and so much information that's going out there for families right now, for individuals. We really look, we're looking at specifically projects to help to, um, to help people to navigate these, this information. Um, so the project that I helped to, um, helped to oversee was utilizing the connectability.ca website, um, which I, I know most of you might know a bit about it, but maybe some aren't as familiar, um, but the connectability.ca website was created, I want to say 20 years ago, Jason, you're probably around that time. Yep. 1999. Okay. 1999, there you go. So, oh my gosh. And so, you know, really the website was intended again to be a resource for individuals, families, caregivers, and resources based on, on uh, you know, if we look at the, I won't get into the whole website, I just suggest you go on and check it out, but, you know, it's broken up into age group, youth, kids, kids, youth, adults, so on, and there's tons and tons of valuable resources on there. Um, I'm going to focus on the COVID page. Um, I had a slideshow, but you know what? I'm not going to, I am going to just go live on the, on the website because I think that's actually more helpful. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Can everyone see the website? Okay, perfect. Okay, so essentially, if you go on the connectability.ca website, there's tabs at the top. Again, identifying those different age groups or different um, groups that I had just mentioned. So we have the kids, youth, adults, seniors. Specifically, what we're looking at is the COVID-19 uh, resources. So if you go on, um, you would just search for this COVID-19 resources here at, um, at uh, the top of the tab. Actually, before we go to this, I am going to go back to another part of connectability, just to the home page. And because what I want to show you is that on the home page, there is um, up to date um, local activities are typically posted here. Um, so it's a really good way to, to, to see what's happening um, within um, the sector, within you know, our communities as well. 
Um, so these are all the, uh, so you can see here, there was something that was posted yesterday, Community Access Learning Center for Parents, Caregivers and Information. So I just wanted to remind everyone that this is not essentially all Community Living Toronto resources. It's really resources from the community, from the sector across Across, it's actually worldwide, essentially. It's not just provincial, there are some international resources as well. Okay, so just going back to the COVID-19 pages. Um, so really, again, the focus of this particular page is around supporting individuals, families, and caregivers. Um, if we're looking at more resources for agencies, there is another web website, um, that is holding those types of resources that are more around policies, IPAC measures, that sort of stuff, things that are created by the sector for the sector. Um, and that's on the real exchange. And if anyone wants to hear more about that, please let me know because I help with that page as well. But you know, focusing this one is on individuals, families, caregivers. So essentially what we try to do is really look at um, looking at opportunities for people to be connected. Um, so here, right at the top of the page, we have these different buttons. Um, the one section is called Let's Connect, and this connects people to um, actually an already existing uh, part of connectability called Connected Families, which is an essentially um, a chat room for individuals and families to go in and you know, ask questions to each other, um, share experiences, as well as connecting with other people. Um, this next section is around questions. So this is if you had, um, if someone had specific questions around supporting someone during COVID-19, you could submit your question below or in here. And then what we would do is we would reach out to a group of subject matter experts that we have um, connected with. Um, to get the answers to the question. So this is more, you're, you're asking a question, we're getting the answer for you and sending it back. It's not a like a chat room, like the, the other section with the connect, let's um, connected family. So the next um, button here is called friendly connections. And this has been a super popular um, uh, initiative that we started, I wanna say in the summertime, so again, to support people in terms of um, helping to combat that, that feeling of isolation and loneliness. So people can go on to Friendly Connections and they could sign up for a connection. Um, and there are different ways that people can get, can, can um, choose from, sorry, from a variety of different connections. So, for instance, if someone wanted a Zoom call, if someone wanted a phone call, if someone wanted a, a we have activity packages that we can send to you, postcards or a good old fashioned letter. Um, so, people would go on there, register. You could register for up to four weeks. Um, you could pick what, whoever you want to be connected to. And then um, we have a group of, uh, of, um, staff and volunteers that help to make those connections happen. Um, you know, I was really surprised. Postcards are super popular. I guess everyone loves getting a good old fashioned something in the mail. So, um, and of course all the Zoom calls and so on. So really great initiative. I really encourage you to, um, you know, if you're supporting anyone that you feel would benefit from this to go on and register for, um, for friendly connections. Okay, I'm gonna take a pause before I go into the resources. Did anyone have any questions or comments? So I think the only thing is we're not covering Community Hub. Um, it's there, well, maybe if that's needed, we'll talk about it later. And is there another session on MCH? That was Petra, what does MCH mean? Does anyone know? My community hub. Okay. Okay. And, and that's going to be at the, yeah, there's a calendar at the bottom, but yes. Okay. Oh, that's not a question for me. That's for Deanna. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's for you. It's for you. Cause I think that's what's at the bottom is, is the programs, right? Yeah. The bottom of this, the, the page there's is the programs. Screen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. yeah. 
So essentially what this is at the bottom, the website connects to our, another initiative called My Community Hub. Um, so really what we wanted to show is the calendar of events. So again, people could go through the calendar and look at upcoming events. Um, and again, this is not, this is, um, you know, agencies would, would register with My Community Hub to post their uh, events that are happening here. Okay. There's really not too much more to it other than you just have to really go through, like you can see here, today there's a well nest caregiver series, um, cohort four, um, sounds like it's been something that uh, has been going on for a little bit. So when you click on the event, it just takes you to the, yeah, to my community hub site that provides a bit of a description and more information and how to register. Jason, did you, are, are you saying something or are you on mute? I just wanted to say these are all virtual events. So yeah. they're not like in-person events, but yeah. there yeah. are yeah. multiple events every single day and for all different audiences and from all different agencies. Absolutely. Great, thank you. Okay, am I back on the COVID page? Okay. Okay, um, so here I have the, um, so back on onto this, the resources. So what we've done here is we have um, broken up the resources into different chapters. Um, so here we have, um, uh, sorry, the different chapters. So we've broken it up into different areas around um, topics like plain language information, vaccines, managing the next wave, resources for caregivers, healthcare resources, mental health, virtual programming, education, financial support, and other helpful websites. So I'll click into one of the chapters just to show you what to expect. So we'll go into plain language. So once you go into the plain language chapter, first of all, what you'll see is there's a, a navigation panel. So this navigation panel, can you bring you back to the other um, pages that we had just to the other chapters. So it's just a bit of a faster way to navigate going back and forth. Um, and then essentially the chapter, the chapter within has several resources broken up into different um, categories. So we have social stories, um, we have infographics and tip sheets, as well as videos. So you could see there are quite a few um, resources here. Um, one of the one of the things that is a little different about the plain language um, um, section is that there's the opportunity for people to um, uh, uh, have the resources either emailed directly to them or to someone else, or a newly um, a new function that we just added to the site is to request printed copies of these plain language resources. So um, what could happen is, so for example, this set of self-help booklets. So I have, so you can see here, I have the, um, the hard copies here. Um, people can go on and register it and they can, we can mail these directly to you in hard copy. This was really, you know, because we're taking the advice that we're hearing from people and um, we've done a lot of um, connecting with uh, Yona Lunsky from um, KMH, from the H card program. And one of the things that she has really recommended is that some people really need to interact with materials. So they need to have these hard copies. They have, need to have these booklets that they could go through and so on. So, um, so that's why we're offering this, um, especially around these self-help booklets. These are, this is a great 
series. Um, again, it's, you know, you can see here, there's like an introduction. There's around, you know, anxiety, feeling down, anxiety, you know, getting a good night's sleep and so on. The thing about these booklets is um, there's also, it, they're, they're also opportunity for people to, if you're for caregivers or for support staff to, um, to help to facilitate conversations through it. So there's a bit of an instruction for those folks in terms of how to, how to support people to interact with these booklets. So I really encourage you, if this is something you feel that the people you support are needed, to go on and, and to request some printed copies. Um, if you wanna do sort of a bulk um, order, please let me know and I can help to make that, um, make that happen. We've sent out probably about 2,500 sets of the books so far. Um, so, uh, really popular. We're working with um, some of the school boards to get those out as well, especially to those folks that might not necessarily be connected to agencies. Um, so that's a really good resource for them as well. Okay, so that's the plain language section. So again, you know, really it's about going in, taking a look. What we really try to do as well is not put every single resource that comes our way. We really try to, to shift through curate so that it's really key um, resources so that people, again, aren't overwhelmed with the amount of resources that are happening. Um, the other thing I wanted, a brand new resource, and we're just doing some, um, uh, we're going to be doing some social media shareables this week, I believe, just to let people know that this has been added to the site is um, uh, some videos that have just been added around caregiver fatigue. So these are the videos here. Um, uh, and these are from um, a registered social worker out in the East region of the province that a lot of the agencies there have, um, have engaged with and have, uh, you know, really um, found that the information that she shares is really helpful. So these are the, the three videos. And again, we're going to have a social media, a shareable that goes out that highlights these videos here too. And I, and we were just having a talk this morning about maybe sending out sort of a weekly or bi-weekly what's new on the COVID page because there's new information that's being added all the time. So especially like you'll see here around the vaccine, um, there's quite a bit of information and that's changing probably on a, on a daily basis. Okay. So again, I'm not gonna go through all of the, actually I will go through one more. <laughs> uh, this managing the next wave, it's funny because when we made it, sadly it was managing the second wave, but it looks like we're in the third wave, um, but here you'll find, just to let you know too, some of the partners that help to, to um, input information into the site include KMH, um, Ontario Caregiver Organization, Partners for Planning, Christian Horizons, um, our folks at CLTO. So there's been quite a number of people that are inputting and we're always looking for, again, if you feel that there's any resources that would be helpful, please, you know, connect and we can uh, talk about getting those posted. So these, um, this was another campaign that was done through Partners for Planning. So they have um, different um, topics that they had um, essentially gone through and um, created what, what we're saying is five key resources. So again, not giving people an overabundant amount of information, but really trying to curate these resources. So here, for instance, there was getting creative and getting involved and they have some, some ideas and some uh, resources or um, connections or, or links that uh, people might find helpful. So these are all through the Partners for Planning uh, initiative. Okay. Excellent, I'm just gonna go back to the site. And then I've already spoken to, um, spoken about the virtual events on the My Community Hub 
website. So again, you know, like Jason said, every day there's an there, there's several events. There's always something going on. It's a really good place to go and stay connected and see what's happening um, virtually. Okay, I am going to stop sharing and just uh, wanted again to see if there was any questions, any comments. You want me to go back and open another um, chapter? I just want to comment. I think it's awesome that there is an option to have something printed and mailed. That has definitely been a gap for a lot of people. So I think that's a great resource for especially folks that are supporting um, individuals and in community or people that are living at home to be aware of. That's, that's a great option. Yeah. Good, good, absolutely. And we really want to get that out there for people to know that it's an option because that's the challenge is really making sure that people know that it's available. So any way that y'all can communicate it out, that would be fantastic. So Peter I, asked about SPPI. Again, your acronyms, Peter, what's SPPI mean? You can talk and unmute yourself and tell us what you're... <laughs> Actually, it was on the chart. It was one of the groups that um, prepared one of the the, um, the things. Yeah. Oh, do you want to know who they are? Yes. Thanks. Okay. Oh. So the 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 SPPI group is the sector pandemic um, sector pandemic planning and planning initiative. initiative. Yeah. So they are sort of a, a collaboration of several agencies that have come together and have created tons of resources. Most of the resources that they have created are um, on the other website that I was talking about because they're more agency policy, IPAC measures, that sort of thing. But they have created some plain language material. So you might see them uh, within the connectability site as well. So whatever resources that they've created that are appropriate for the connectability site, we've, we've uh, uh, posted on that site as well. I, I think it's important to note that there's a lot of information being sent out there and you guys get that a lot from me. I know that quite a few are on my list. So if you ever in doubt, just go to the site. Um, it ends up landing there. Um, that's, so I sit on this committee with Anne-Marie as well. And that was one of the things is where the resources go. So that's the cool thing about this project. It sort of came about by just saying there's a lot of information, let it land somewhere. And also the real exchange, we should share the link with you guys so you can check that out too. It's another fantastic uh, resource um, if you're interested. And uh, between the two of them, you should be sorted, <laughs> right? Sure, yeah, yeah. You're an expert. <laughs> what was the other one, um, Deanna, sorry. Real exchange. If, yeah, here, I'll put the link in the and we'll do chat that here. Yeah, and you know, essentially, I could do a quick share on the real exchange too. Um, just to show you, um, you know, really the the real exchange is set up quite similar. Um, you know, we have here upcoming. Again, this is more focused on on the agencies, the staff, the 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 management of agencies. Um, so here, that pandemic um, SPPI initiative has a, a webinar series um, that uh, uh, it's entitled uh, Resilience, Adaption and Reopening. So they do um, sort of weekly, uh, I think it's weekly or bi-weekly webinars. Um, so, you know, it seems like the last few times, of, obviously the topic has been around um, um, uh, the vaccine. So. Um, this clicks to to information about those uh, upcoming uh, webinars. And then again, it's really broken up very similarly. Um, but again, these are more um, focused on agency resources. So if you see here, it would have, um, you know, stuff that we would see in the IPAC stuff. So, you know, pandemic plan framework, checklist for group homes or day supports and so on. So you'll see that that SPPI group is like a major, um, major input into this website. Okay. 
Uh, and there is the uh, section around staff morale as well, which is really important. And there's some social media shareables that we've had um, that we've developed that have been used across the province as well. So some really great resources. Again, another, you know, um, another focus, but, you know, some do, some resources do overlap, but, um, you know, there are, you know, there are some really great stuff here for agencies as well. Anne-Marie, um, on the real exchange, is there um, a link to the Safe Haven IPAC training modules as well for the yeah, agency? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that could be, uh, I'm not sure. No, these are, sorry, other websites that are connected. It's probably in the IPAC section here. I'd have to go through, but... Um, I know that I had it there at one point. I'd probably have to go down and figure out where it is at this point. But we could do a search. There's a search bar that people can do. So uh, the search bar is right here. So if we say, let's see how good our search bar is. Hmm. You know what? I know I had it there. We'll talk afterwards. And uh, it could have been that there was, uh, it was just like a time sensitive because I don't know if they're doing yeah. them anymore. So they might've come down now because I know they were time sensitive. I think there was some question around that, and I know that they have not been willing to have them um, uh, filmed and shared because actually the that's information what it changes. Was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I, that's what it was. We posted when they were happening, but we can't post the recording because yeah. they didn't want, because they wanted people to be on in those sessions live and they weren't recorded. That was it. Thanks, yeah. There's so much information. <laughs> anyway. Any other questions about connectability or the real exchange or anything else? Provincial network? Who the heck is provincial network? Does anyone want to know? <laughs> um, I was just wondering, Jason, if is there a section on connectability for the spring break programs this year? Um, not a specific section unto itself, but uh, the community news, I'm getting lots of programs as they're coming in. So I'm putting them up there. And anytime I see anything like that, that is a virtual program, I'm pushing them onto my community hub as well. So that my community hub has this really nice calendar and it's being shown on our COVID section, right? So there's, with connectability, we like to post things in multiple different places so that we can get your eyeballs. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're really looking for that specific week, check out the calendar on the COVID section and then keep an eye on the community news because that stuff does change regularly, daily. And one last thing about connectability while I have you all here, there's a little orange tab on the right-hand side of the screen. On the connectability site? On the connectability, there's feedback. Looks a bit like an old Levi's tag off your jeans. Yeah. <laughs> If you click on that, it's feedback. It comes, an email gets sent to me and I'll answer your question or I'll find someone in the community who can answer your question. 